We worship a God who is beyond us, yet near to us. We worship a God who speaks to us in creation, scripture, and the Holy Spirit. We revere God for God's power and might. We draw near to a God who loves us tenderly. Let us offer our prayers and praise to God. Let us listen for the ways God will speak to us today. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Tonight's reading is from Genesis chapter 28, beginning at the 10th verse. Jacob left Bashir and went toward Harlan, came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on earth. The top of it reached to the heaven. 
and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And your, the Lord stood behind, beside him and said, I am the Lord, the Lord God of Abraham, your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? There is none of this is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head, and he set it up for a pillar, and poured oil on top of the of it, and he called that place Bethel. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. When you hear the words Jacob's Ladder, what do you think of? I did a search for Jacob's Ladder, um, trying to just get some visual pieces for that. And one of the things that came up a lot online was a film that was like suspense or horror, it seems. Um, Jay, I haven't seen it, but um, all these images were not very peaceful images. So there's a film, Jacob's Ladder. There are also, um, you know, some different scattered places called Jacob's Ladder. And this picture here that you see was right outside the window of my office in India. Um, I would look out at this. And this was a very steep stairway through this garden. And we called this Jacob's Ladder. That's the name of this this particular garden. Um, flowers growing at all levels and the mist coming in. In our story tonight, we have the story of Jacob. Um, he's, he's gone to in search of a wife and he's left his brother who he deceived. Um, Jacob, we've been reading, is he's a scoundrel. Um, and so he deceived his brother, and he fled from his brother, and he was going to a faraway place to look for his um, for a wife for himself. And on this journey, he it comes to be nighttime, and he goes to sleep. Um, and first, it says that he gets this big stone for a pillow. I don't know how many of you would choose a stone for a pillow, if that contributed to the dream he had or not. But um, sometimes we have dreams by the discomfort that we have. But in this dream, he sees this ladder, and the ladder goes up to heaven. So the um, theme of Jacob's ladder is this ladder that goes up to heaven. So how would you picture that ladder? What would that look like to have that dream and to see the ladder going back and forth? This is another image that I thought was a beautiful image. This is Jacob's ladder in Grace Cathedral in San Francisco a nine-story electronic sculpture by um, the artist Jim Campbell. Nine-story electronic sculpture, that's a pretty large sculpture. And it's done, um, you know, there's, there's uh, lights involved in this sculpture. I wonder what it was for Jacob's ladder into the heavens. So Jacob was spending the night outside. The sun had set. He didn't arrive to a place that was comfortable, a place that would take him in. But out there in the middle of nowhere, sleeping under the stars with a stone for his pillow, he had this dream of the ladder that goes up to heaven. And that there are angels of God ascending and descending from this ladder. And the Lord stands beside Abraham, and um, he renews this promise that uh, he had made to Abraham. 
Abraham was the grandfather of Jacob. He removes, remo renews the promise for Jacob himself that all the land I will give you, your offspring will be like the dust of the earth. They will spread abroad to the west and the east and north and south, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and your offspring. You know, sometimes our spreading or scattering um, can seem like a difficult thing. We have the diaspora of the Jews that has scattered them through tribulation and problems. They've been scattered to the corners, all the corners of the earth, all throughout the earth. They have fled from one land to another. And now their descendants are filling up this globe in all different places. And the blessings of God have covered this globe along with them. My family is scattered. Um, I would love to have all my family together in one place. My mom always talked about if she was like a mother hen wanting to gather her chicks together, but her chick, her chicks, none of them were together. They were in different countries in different states. They're across oceans and they're far away. And sometimes this spreading out of the family or the scattering of the family is something that we can end up, you know, longing for the people to be present, especially in a time when it's difficult to travel and see each other. And what may seem to us as a trial ends up being to God as an opportunity for blessing. My family is scattered over the earth, but I think that God is at work all over the earth where my family is. And there is blessing happening wherever my family is. And they've gotten to know other people and they share the blessings with other people and share their blessings. And so with Jacob, as he is to spread and cover the earth, the blessings of God go and cover the earth along with them. They go before him. God tells him, know that, where, that I am with you. I will keep you wherever you go. It doesn't matter where this journey takes us and where the journey takes our families. God will be with us in this land. I'll not leave you until I've done what I've promised. And that's a wonderful promise that we have from God, that um, even in our journeys, even when we are um, in, the, in, in new circumstances, in new places, in new conditions, in new um, customs that are forming, that God is with us there in whatever land we find ourselves, in whatever terrain we find ourselves, and that God is there and will not leave us until he's done what he's promised. Jacob wakes up from this dream and he says, surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. Have you had um, an experience where you were suddenly overcome with the realization that God has been present in the place? And that presence for Jacob was one that filled him with fear. He was afraid. He said, how awesome is this presence? This is none other than the house of God. I've been sleeping in the house of God and not knowing it. So he rose up early and placed a stone and made a, made a marking for this place. And he called it place Bethel, which is the house of God. In the circumstances that we encounter each day. What difference does it make to be aware of the presence of God? And how many times are we in the presence of God and not knowing that we are in that presence? I mean, we, we are talking about, you know, frequently God is with us always and God will never leave us. But there are many circumstances when we are um, far from where we want to be, far from loved ones, and where God is present in a way that transforms the surroundings around us. I think it's a matter of perspective. Um, in our closing hymn tonight, I've put different pictures with the and they are pictures that um, happen at different 
different stages, taking steps back and seeing, um, seeing different perspectives of the creation of God. I think that when we are in the middle of circumstances, sometimes the perspectives can be overwhelming. When we are able to take a step back, things begin to take perspective and we begin to see the beauty that's around those things. And when we step back farther still, we see how small we are. And we realize that the work of God is much greater than we are. In this night, we are surrounded by the beauty of God. The beauty of God that transforms our experiences, it transforms our night. And the blessings of God spread before us and will never leave us. The blessings, the blessings of God spread beyond farther than what we can see, what we can experience. You know, when we come to a new home, to a new place, nothing is familiar and nothing is in place. We have to discover, find our way through that. We find a home, we find friends, we find uh, the things that we need. We find out where do we shop, what do we do, how do we do things. And we are in a, a new, it's like moving now. We are in new circumstances where we are finding new ways to live. And those steps are, um, they, they can be very, very um, exhausting for people. This morning in meeting with the pastors, people, the pastors were talking about all of their worship experiences these days, and they're, the, each one is trying something different. And they talked about how exhausting it is to have a service with masks on. We've had people who want to gather for worship in the parking lot, and what struck me this morning was one of the pastors was talking about their worship services out in the parking lot and was saying it's very, very hot in the parking lot. And do we have all the cars on with the exhaust going um, for air conditioning? How do we do that? So we're in a, we're in a land where things are not, um, the, the new ways are not obvious. And some of the things that first come to our mind, you know, are, are different than, it's not what we expect. You know, what we're hoping for is not um, when we pursue those things, when we have a, an outdoor service, you know, it just won't be the same as what we've had before. So we are like Jacob. We are on a new land. And sometimes it feels like we're sleeping on rocks. And it's uncomfortable. It's difficult. But my prayer is that we can have our eyes open to see that which binds us to heaven. To see the angels that are tending to us. To see that we are in the presence of God. And that that presence of God transforms our reality all around us. So we're on a journey. And we're on a journey together. And we're not on a journey with God. May God's peace be with you. And may you look and see the beauty that is surrounding all around. May that welcome you into a new kind of living. God's peace be with you. And also with you.
Now to God, who's able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we can ask or imagine, according to the power at work within us, be the glory now and forever. O oh Lord our God, we thank you for the beauty of this night and for the stars above us. We thank you, O oh Lord, that in all these stars is the word reminding us of your promises, that you hold the stars in their courses and that you will hold us as well in your hands and in your course. Lord, like Jacob, life can be um, a bit of a turmoil. Things upended, leaving customs and places that were familiar and ending up in places that are uncomfortable, situations that um, are not the most ideal as far as what we would hope for. We're in a journey and a time in between. We aren't at our destination, but in that journey, we find that the journey is difficult. So we ask, O oh Lord, that you will come and transform our vision. That the joyous light of heavenly glory would shine upon us. And that our eyes would see the glory of God all around. That in the evening we would be renewed. That our perspective would be refreshed. O oh Lord, we ask as people become restless, in this journey, this long journey. We ask, O oh Lord, for your inspiration. We ask, O oh Lord, that we might see the ways in which you attend to us, that we might see your work at is present that maybe we weren't aware of before. We look to you, O oh Lord, for life and for provisions for the days ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Oh, Lord God, we thank you for answers to prayer. We thank you, oh, Lord, that you are a miracle worker. We thank you that you will not leave us until your promises are kept, are fulfilled, and that your promises are promises of life. So we lift before you, oh, Lord, those that we love. We come before you and ask that you would care for them, that you would renew them, that you would bring healing that you would not leave them until your promises are kept. Lord, hear the voices, the prayers, the people that we raise before you at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, while we are um, sometimes taken up by the pursuits of this earth, the news full of things that are um, in battle with each other, of things that rise up, of things that lack peace, we thank you, O oh Lord, that you are not swayed by these winds, but that you remain focused, that you remain focused on blessings, that you remain focused on goodness, that you remain focused on your purposes. And we, O oh Lord, may we be created in your image. May we learn to focus on that which gives life and not be distracted or blown about by the winds of this earth but that we might have a steady rudder, that we might be headed for the promised land, that we might, O oh Lord, blessed by you, be a blessing for others. Thank you, Lord, for your angels all around this night. Thank you that we are dwelling in God's house, God's earth. Through Jesus we pray, amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Savior, and Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. I mentioned how perspectives change. Um, this picture we saw one time during worship some months ago, but it's my daughter swinging 3,000 feet above the capital city where I was born. And from up there, it's much different than if you were right down in the middle of traffic jams and all the noise. And I wonder about how, um, as we hear the billions of voices singing the great song, how our perspectives change depending on the view that we have. O oh God of blessings.
peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.